Is AI the future that will change humanity forever? Or is it the biggest financial bubble we've seen since the dot-com crash just waiting to pop? Remember the late 90s? The hype, the Super Bowl ads for companies with no profits? We're seeing the same dizzying heights and the same nervous questions today. On one side, you have the hype, the belief that it's only a matter of time before AI takes over every job. On the other, you have skeptics calling it bloated and screaming for a market correction. The scary part, even top AI experts are starting to warn that the large language models we see today might be hitting a hard ceiling. Ilya Sutskever, one of the godfathers of this tech, said that scaling these models has plateaued and that data, the stuff that feeds AI, is the new fossil fuel, and we might be running out. So which is it? Are we betting on the next evolution of technology, or are we just being overly optimistic? To figure this out, we need to break the AI industry in two. First, you have the primary market. Think of these as the master chefs, the ones creating the secret sauce. Companies like OpenAI, Google's Gemini Anthropic, and XAI. They are the ones building, training, and deploying these revolutionary AI models. Then you have the secondary market. These guys take those powerful models and build apps on top of them. Think of perplexity for web searching, notion for productivity, or specialized agents for coding and deep research. They're applying the magic to solve real world problems. Let's start with the primary market, because if there's a bubble, this is ground zero. When OpenAI dropped ChatGPT to the public in November, 2022, the world changed and it hit 100 million active users in just two months. To put that in perspective, it took Netflix 18 years to do that. Facebook, four and a half years, and Instagram, two and a half. The adoption speed was unlike anything we'd ever seen, and the money followed. OpenAI's valuation exploded from $20 billion in 2022 to $29 billion in 2023 to a staggering $300 billion by 2025. But here's where the first cracks started to show. With every new model, public expectations soared. GPT-4 was a massive success blowing past what anyone thought was possible. But this created a dangerous gap, the gap between the euphoric hype and the actual reality of the technology. That gap became a chasm in August 2025, when OpenAI released GPT-5. The verdict? It was underwhelming. Let's be real. The hype leading up to it was insane. People were expecting a button that would deliver true artificial general intelligence. What they got was an incremental improvement. It was like expecting a spaceship and getting a slightly faster Tesla. It's a great car, but it's not going to take you to Mars. This fueled the fear that maybe we're just getting better at refining the same core idea, not making fundamental breakthroughs. So is the innovation itself a bubble? For the last five years, AI progress has been fueled by four things, the size of the model, the training data, the computing power, and the training techniques. For a long time, the strategy was simple just make everything bigger. But that playbook is getting old. The real bottleneck now isn't money for bigger computers. It's the data itself. We're running out of high quality human text from the internet to feed these models. On top of that, getting new data is getting harder with lawsuits over data ownership popping up everywhere. The proposed solution, synthetic data, AI generated data to train other AIs. But for language, it's not a silver bullet, LLMS, need to be grounded in the nuance and messy reality of high quality human text to be effective. Now, there is a counter argument. Even if we're out of data, maybe we can invent smarter ways for the AI to learn. Think of it this way. Two people can read the same book, but one person might gain a much deeper understanding. Breakthroughs in training techniques have led to massive leaps in the past. So maybe the tech isn't in a bubble, but that brings us to the second much bigger problem, the capital. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, famously said that AI is in a bubble and that a lot of people will lose a lot of money. And he should know. Let's look at the spending. This isn't just about building the future. It's driven by pure FOMO, fear of missing out. No CEO of a trillion dollar tech giant wants to be the one who missed AI, ending up like the blockbuster of their generation. So they're throwing tens of billions at the problem. Microsoft, Google, and Meta have all pledged to spend between 60 to $100 billion just on AI data centers. OpenAI is involved in a joint venture expected to spend $500 billion on a single facility in Texas. 
And get this, OpenAI, a company valued at $300 billion, recently signed a deal to spend $300 billion with Oracle on computing power. A company valued at $300 billion is spending its entire valuation on a single deal while building other, even more expensive projects. How are they funding this? Their annual recurring revenue as of July 2025 is $12 billion. Worse, it's rumored OpenAI is actually losing money on API requests, and their cash burn rate is putting them deep in the red. When Sam Altman says people will lose money, maybe he's talking about his own shareholders. And it's not just OpenAI. XAI is valued at $75 billion, while reportedly losing $1 billion every month. Anthropic is valued at $61 billion on $5 billion of revenue. On top of all this, these companies are in a brutal talent war. This is less about hiring and more about poaching. It's a strategic game where you're not just strengthening your team, you're actively weakening rivals. When Meta offers a $100 million contract to a top researcher, they're not just buying skills, they're buying market dominance. So what's the escape plan? The secondary market. The idea is that companies can rapidly grow their revenue by applying their models to specific use cases, reaching a wider audience. Many primary market companies are trying to do this now, buying up smaller companies to get a foothold. But here's the final twist. The hype has infected the secondary market too. Acquiring these companies now comes with a hefty premium. Cursor is valued at nearly $10 billion, and Notion is also valued at $10 billion if there's no easy way out. We're seeing mind-blowing innovations in image and video generation, that continue to fuel excitement like the newest Sora. Today, we're announcing the Sora app, powered by the all-new Sora 2. It's the most powerful imagination engine ever built. This tug of war between hype and skepticism isn't new. The AI industry has survived multiple AI winters in the past, when funding dried up after the tech failed to deliver on its promises. But this time feels different. While you could argue we're heading for another winter in terms of innovation, we are in completely uncharted territory when it comes to the sheer amount of money being thrown around. It's the dot-com bubble all over again, but on steroids. Back then, the crash wiped out hundreds of worthless companies, but from those ashes rose the giants that define our world today, Amazon and Google. The question now is, who will be the Amazon of the AI boom, and who will be the pets.com? The real question is whether any of this capital is being allocated efficiently. When the music finally stops, how long will it take for anyone investing in this frenzy to see a return on their investment? But what do you think? Is this the bubble we need? Are you excited about the potential of the situation or are you a little bit nervous? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I read every single one. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the future of AI, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest breakthroughs, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. You won't want to miss what's coming next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.